it's the longest bone of the upper lip, right? It's a bone of the upper lip. Rather, I, I told you before that it, this is the uh, longest bone of the upper lip, right? And it is called humerus because it's a humerus is a Latin word which means the upper arm. Okay, it's a Latin word which means the upper arm and the upper arm of the shoulder, right? Well, this bone is also called as a funny bone, you okay, know, and uh, you know, sometimes it's called as a funny bone because uh, when the medial aspect, sometimes the medial aspect of your elbow strikes somewhere accidentally, right? So you get a feeling of, you know, waiting room, see, waiting room. Okay, do Okay, so it, I, I was telling you that uh, it is also called as a funny bone. And of course, when sometimes the <clears throat> medial aspect of your uh, elbow, it strikes somewhere accidentally, you've got a mixed feeling of the pain and the laughter, right? So that's why it is also known as the funny bone. Well, the, this word humorous is also homophone with the English word the humorous. What does the humorous mean? Funny. That is... Humorous means um, causing laughter, comic, okay? amusement, right? So this word humorous is the homophone to the word uh, uh, humorous, right? Okay, now <clears throat> it is categorized as the long bone, okay? As told you before, if it's a long bone, it must be having an upper end, a lower end, and then a shaft, right? On the upper aspect, it is going to make a joint with the scapula, right? The glenoid cavity of the scapula and going to form a glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint. In the lower aspect, it is going to make a joint with the upper end of the radius and the ulna. The lateral one is the radius and the medial one is the ulna. So it is going to, the lower end is going to make a joint with the upper end of the radius and the ulna and form the elbow joint. Okay, the problem is not the Okay, now we'll talk about its site determination. As I told you, it has got an upper end and the lower end, right? The upper end, number one, for the site determination, that upper end is a bit rounded, okay? It's a rounded and is going to form the head, okay? Upper end, it is rounded and is going to form the head, whereas the lower end is. But this mic is distortion and it's kindly one. Jinke mic me distortion of please come on Okay, so upper end, I was telling you the identification or the side determination. So it, uh, at the upper end, it is rounded, right? And the lower end is expanded from side to side. Okay, ji, upper end kya hoga, iska rounded hoga, or lower end kya hai, it is expanded from side to side and flattened from before backwards, anterior posterior. Okay, na? Ya, apne dekhe, side side it is expanded. Or anterior posterior, it is just pressed, compressed. You know, pressed. Yeah, yeah, flattened, right? Okay. The second point is the head. It is directed medially upwards and slightly backwards. Okay. In case ki anatomical position kya hai? The head is directed medially upwards and slightly backwards. Okay. Whereas there is one more thing I just let you know. In, in, the, in the proximal part of the upper part, the anterior aspect of the upper part, sorry, anterior aspect of the upper part, there is a small projection. Okay? There is a small prominence that is called as the lesser tubercle, right? In the anterior aspect of the upper part, there is a small prominence over here, right? And this prominence is called as the lesser tubercle. Okay? which is limited literally by a groove or the sulcus. Okay? A depression okay, is lesser tubercle okay, literally, right? And that is called as the intertubercular circles or the bicipital groove. Okay? It is called the intertubercular circles because you have a little lesser tubercle or lesser tubercle or greater tubercle. There are two tubercles in the upper part, right? In the tubercle, that's why that sulcus is called as the intertubercular sulcus, right? Or the intertubercular <coughs> groove. Or the, but it's also named as the bicipital groove. 
ठीक है जी तो प्रॉब्लम तो नहीं है बच्चे साइड डिटर्मिनेशन में साइड डिटर्मिनेशन में प्रॉब्लम है तो बता दें जी साइड डिटर्मिनेशन में टोल्ड यू नंबर वन द अपर एंड इज राउंडेड राइट एंड द लोअर एंड इट इज एक्सपेंडेड फ्रॉम साइड टू साइड एक्सपेंडेड फ्रॉम साइड टू साइड एंड इट इज फ्लैट एंड एंटीरियर पोस्टीरियर ठीक है ये बिल्कुल फ्लैट होता है लोअर एंड ठीक है अपर एंड राउंडेड है और लोअर एंड फ्लैट है इट इज एक्सपेंडेड फ्रॉम साइड टू साइड एंड इट इज फ्लैट एंड ठीक है इज इट क्लियर देन नंबर टू हेड इट हेड इज डायरेक्टेड मीडियली अपवर्ड्स एंड स्लाइटली बैकवर्ड्स यू सी अब थोड़ा सा आप देख रहे हैं कि ये रोटेटेड है ठीक है ना थोड़ा सा बैकवर्ड्स रोटेट हुआ हुआ है ठीक है That is medially upwards and slightly backwards. And number third, <coughs> number third, क्या था जी? There is a prominence on the anterior aspect of the upper part, and that is called as a lesser tubercle, which is mounted laterally by this intertubercular surface. ठीक है जी आगे चलें. कोई problem तो नहीं है बेटा. <coughs> no. We'll talk about the characteristic features one by one. So, as I told you, that's a long bone. <coughs> long bone है तो क्या है जी? It has got Two ends, upper end and the lower end, and a shaft. That's it, Ji. Upper end, lower end, and a shaft. Right? Okay. So the upper end. Upper end has got the certain parts. First of all, it has got this hemispherical part. Right? The upper end. Me, just first of all, you will come across this hemispherical part, and that is called as the head of the humerus. Right? and this head of the humerus it is followed by this small groove in the upper part and in the lower part this obliquely running you see you can see this line this obliquely running area so in the upper part it is represented by the groove in the lower part it is going to form by the going to form a very clear ridge over there right so this is called as a anatomical neck the junction between the head and the shaft right between the head and the shaft This is called as the anatomical neck of the humerus. ठीक है जी? And here you can see this anatomical neck is going to separate the head from these two tubercles, the lesser tubercle and the lateral and the greater tubercle. So after this anatomical neck, we have got the these two prominences: one on the anterior aspect of the you know anterolateral aspect of this head, and another one is on the lateral aspect of this head, right? so these two prominences the one is the lesser tubercle and the lateral one is the greater tubercle right so in between these two tubercles you can see this groove or this sulcus that is called as a intertubercular groove right and just below these tuberosities or tubercles you can see there is a constriction of the this is followed by this a constriction of the shaft in this region right and this constriction is called as a surgical neck of the humerus so when we talk about the upper end or the upper extremity or the proximal part of the bone theek hai na is also called the proximal end of the bone so when we talk about the uh, the proximal end so it consists of certain parts number 1 it consists of the head number 2 it consists of the anatomical neck number 3 the lesser tubercle number 4 the greater tubercle number 5 the intertubercular sulcus and number 6 we have got this surgical neck yahan to koi problem hai to bachche puch le is there any confusion mujtaba kidhar gaye hain sare kindly respond kare bachche kindly respond me aapko samajh mein aa raha hai ki nahi koi problem hai to mujhe bataye upper end mein koi problem to nahi hai no sir no sir ab clear hai yes yes sir okay After the neck, we have oh, sorry. Uh, after the upper end, we have got the shaft. Okay, okay. okay. This shaft, it is cylindrical in the upper part. Okay, up is the upper part. Okay, that is rounded. Okay, whereas in the lower part, it is prismoid or triangular. Okay, you can see these three borders over here very clearly marked over here. This is an anterior border. This is a lateral border. This is a medial border. Of course, of course, if there are three borders, then three surfaces will be there. Okay. Three borders, na anterior border, the lateral border, and the medial border. ठीक है? और उसकी तीन surfaces कौन सी होंगी जी? Antero lateral between the anterior border and the lateral border, antero medial between the anterior border and the medial border, and the posterior which is present between the medial and the lateral borders. Is it clear? ठीक है जी? 
posterior surface with the cardiac scheme. Okay. Yeah, but I just show you the posterior surface. Uh, okay. Here you can see now the medial and the lateral border of the Miami, you can see this surface that is called as a whole of the surface called as a posterior surface, right? So when we talk about this shaft, the shaft is, I told you, it is cylindrical in the upper part and in the lower part it is triangular. It has got three borders, anterior, medial and the lateral and three surfaces, anterolateral, anteromedial and the posterior surface. Okay, the problem? Clear? Okay. Now, the lower end. Okay, I'm just, being, uh, I'm just giving you a brief introduction of all these structures, uh, all these characteristic features, then we'll talk about them in detail. Okay? So, about the lower end. If you have a look over lower end, I told you the lower end is what? It is expanded from side to side and is going to form the condyles. Just like we have a femur, maybe your tibia, maybe not. The upper end, the lower end of the femur, it is expanded from side to side and form the condyles. Likewise, okay, you can see the lower end of the humerus, it is expanded okay, from side to side and form the medial condyle and the lateral condyle, right? And on the tips of these two condyles, on the medial aspect, there is a small projection that is called as a medial epicondyle. Epi means above, okay? On the condyles, okay? Like so, is on the medial condyle, there is a small elevation that is called as a medial epicondyle and on the lateral aspect, there is a small elevation of, and that is called as a lateral epicondyle. Very simple. Your problem is other. Okay. And then at the lower end, we have got the two processes. Here you can see this rounded project process on the lateral aspect of the humerus. Okay. Lateral aspect of the lower end of the humerus. This is a rounded part. Rounded just like a hat. Okay. So that is called as a capitula. Right. The small rounded process on the lateral aspect of the lower end of the humerus that is called as a capitulum, right? And capitulum means, it's a Latin word, it means the little head, right? Small head, right? And on the medial aspect, you can see this fully shaped process that is called as a trochlea. So medial one is fully shaped, that is called as a trochlea, and the later one, it is rounded and it is, that is called as a capitulum, right? Just above the capitulum on the anterior surface, there is a small depression. Okay? There is a small depression here. You can see just above the capitulum on the anterior aspect, there is a small depression over here. And that depression of the fossa is called as a radial fossa. Okay? It is called as a radial fossa. Right? Okay. And just above the trochlea, there is also again, there is a depression. There is a fossa. Okay, that is called as a on the anterior surface, and that is called as a coronoid fossa. Okay, ji, the problem to nahi On the anterior surface above the capitulum, there is a fossa that is called as a radial fossa, and on the anterior surface above the tro trochlea, there is another depression of the fossa that is called as the coronoid fossa. Okay, on the posterior aspect, on the post on the posterior aspect of the trochlea. At the lower end, there is a bigger fossa over here. You can see, okay, just above the trochlea on the medial, sorry, on the posterior surface, right? There is another fossa that is called as the follicular non fossa. Okay, the problem is the other. I can repeat the lower end. Lower end is expanded from side, side to side and going to form the medial and the lateral epicondyle, oh, sorry, uh, medial and the lateral condyles, right? And on the edges of these condyles, we have got the on the medial aspect, we have got this projection. Excuse me. Hello. Ji, what is it? I'm going to tell you about what I'm going to Okay, Ji. So, <clears throat> so when we talk about the lower end, so we in the, at the lower end, we, we have got the, a, uh, that the, we have talked that the lower end is expanded from side to side, right? And it is 
uh, uh, having the two condyles, the middle condyle and the lateral condyle, and then the two epicondyles, the medial one, the middle epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle. Then we have got the two processes, the rounded one, that is the capitulum, and on the lateral aspect, and the, on the medial aspect, the pulley shape that is called the trochlea, right? And on the anterior surface, there are two fossas, just above the capitulum, that is the radial fossa, and the other one over the trochlea, that is called as a coronoid fossa. And on the posterior surface above the trochlea, there is another bigger fossa that is called as the oligarnon fossa. You have to ask me about this problem. Is there a problem? Let me know. Everything is clear, better? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, we'll talk about the Apparent proximal part, which consists of what? Number one, which is uh, having the first part that is called as a head, right? So head of the humerus, here you can see that of the humerus, it is hemispherical. It is going to form about, about one third of the sphere. Okay? pura is the rounded name. In the case of humerus, uh, sorry, in the case of the femur, the head is rounded all over, right? So it is going to, you know, it is just going to form the one third of the sphere. Right, and it is also called the caput humeri, caput humeri, right? And it is directed. I told you, kya kya thi di direction iski? Kya mujhe bataega? Head is directed. Head is directed. Upward and medially. So it is directed medially, upwards and slightly backwards. Thora sa slightly rotated hota na, slightly backward hota, right? And it is going to make the articulation with the glenoid cavity of the Scapula, okay, and form the glenohumeral joint and the or the shoulder joint, okay, na? and you see the head, the size of the head, it is larger than the pear-shaped glenoid cavity, right? So you see this, there's a big disproportion between the the both articulating surfaces, okay, na? Just say uh, when we compare it with the hip joint, what was The head, jo hai, that is basically getting inside that cavity, a stabulum ke andar chala jata, right? So that it's properly draped, okay? Lekin, you can see that the head is the larger and the receiving end, this, the, that uh, uh, glenoid cavity, that is the smaller one. And this disproportion, okay? This disproportion, jo hai, that is between the head and the glenoid cavity, it, you know, uh, it is going to form uh, in, an instable joint. Okay? And this instability is basically at the cost of the wider range of the movement. Okay? So, this is your disproportion hai, that allows the wider range of the movement at your shoulder joint. Okay? And that is what that is at the cost of the stability because the receiving end is smaller and the head it is the larger. Is it clear? Is problem? Okay? So, this purpose is that the head is larger and thus, uh, that uh, receiving head is smaller. That it, this arrangement will allow the high range or the wide range of mobility. Okay, is it clear? Okay, now we come to the anatomical neck. Have a look over here. This is an anatomical neck. An anatomical neck, it is also called as a column anatomicum, right? And this column. It is represented by the groove I told you before that there, it is in the upper part, right? It is represented by a groove. Here, a groove is there. Well, in the lower part, it is going to form a fine ridge. ठीक है यहाँ पे ये ridge की shape इख्तियार कर लेता है. ऊपर से ये groove आता है और यहाँ पे आके it is going to give the appearance of the ridge, which is just going to surround this anatomical neck. It is going to surround the articular, you know, or articular surface of the head. ठीक है ये आठ सारी articular surface को ना from all over, this is encircled. And here you see that this anatomical neck, it is directed obliquely, okay? It is obliquely, right? And it's going to form an obtuse, a narrow angle, okay? A narrow angle, pe it is going to make the joint between the head and the shaft. The head or shaft, it is going a narrow angle, right? And this is basically going to represent the line of the few, you know, the epiphyseal part. Okay, and this, you know, and in the upper part here, in the grooved area, right, there are the multiple vascular foramina. Okay, when you the original bone, you will be coming across the grooved upper part, anatomical, like this, there are multiple small, small 
foraminas hote hain and these are basically for the vessels to enter into the pore theek hai blood supply ke liye hote hain is it clear ji problem to nahi hai aur ye yahan pe kya cheez attach hogi ji anatomy ke leg pe kya cheez attach hogi ji anybody annular ligament shayad kuch is tarah ka ligament attach hota hai बेटे वेयर एवर इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म अ सेनोवियल जॉइंट तो सेनोवियल जॉइंट का कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर क्या होता है कैप्सूल सर कैप्सूल राइट तो हेड पे तो कैप्सूल अटैच नहीं होता कैप्सूल हमेशा कहां पे अटैच होता है नेक पे अटैच राइट सो दैट दिस इज कॉल्ड द द इट इज गोइंग टू रिसीव द अटैचमेंट ऑफ द कैप्सूल ऑफ द शोल्डर जॉइंट एंड दिस कैप्सूल इज अटैच ऑल ओवर फॉर द एंटीरियर एस्पेक्ट सुपीरियर एस्पेक्ट एंड द पोस्टीरियर एस्पेक्ट व्हाइल इट इज डेफिशिएंट एट द किस जगह पे डेफिशिएंट होगा जी कैप्सूल इसका सर मीडियली द कैप्सूल इज इनफीरियरली ये इसका सी राइट इनफीरियर मीडियली राइट ठीक है ये देखें ये कैप्सूल इज अटैच्ड ऑल ओवर फ्रॉम द यू नो दिस एंटीरियर स्पैक एंड सुपीरियर स्पैक एंड देन ऑल ओवर दिस पोस्टीरियर स्पैक व्हिच यू कैन सी एंड इन द लोअर पार्ट हियर इट इज डेफिशिएंट वेयर एट द इनफीरियर मीडियल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द शोल्डर इज इट क्लियर Or, or not deficient, but it is loosely, you know, attached in there. Or is ki kya vajja? Because ki yahan pe hume kya chahiye? Because we need the wide range of movements. ठीक है? अगर ये भी कोई इसके edges पे होता तो क्या होता? The range of movement should not be so. They they should not they should not be so wide range of the movement. ठीक है जी? Clear? कोई problem नहीं है बच्चे यहाँ पे. Okay, we'll talk about the tubercle, the dated tubercle. Well, here you can see. The gear tubercle is what? It's a prominence. It's a prominence on the top of the humerus. Okay? Humerus is up, 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 up. This is a rounded elevation. It's a prominence on top of the humerus that is situated and it's situated, situated lateral to the head. You see, it is situated just opposite, just lateral to the head, and posterior lateral to the lesser tubercle. You see, this is a lesser tubercle. It's a gear tubercle, and it is lying lateral to the head. एंड पोस्टोल टोल यू ना कि एंटीरियर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ पार्ट से ये ट्यूबरकल आ रहा है ठीक है तो इट इज लाइंग पोस्टोल टू दी लेसर ट्यूबर ठीक है तो इसकी जो अपर सर्फेस है ना बेटा इट इज स्पीरियर सर्फेस राइट एंड दैट स्पीरियर सर्फेस इट इज यू नो राउंडेड ठीक है एंड इट इज गोइंग टू हैव एन इम्प्रेशन ओवर है टॉप ठीक है ऑन द्रो पोस्टीरियर एस्पेक्ट देर आर द्री इम्प्रेशन इन अ रो द स्पीरियर फेसेट the middle facet and the inferior facet theek hai ji aur ye jo teen facets hain bachche these are responsible for giving the insertion to the three muscles wo kon kon se muscles ji spear facet is going to give or insertion to the supraspinatus the middle facet is going to give insertion to the infraspinatus and the inferior or the lower facet it is going to give the insertion to the teres minor muscle theek hai ji is it clear get it ओके नो दिस क्रेस्ट ऑफ द ग्रेटर ट्यूबरकल दिस क्रेस्ट ठीक है ये एक रिज मैंने आपको बताया था ना कि दोनों ट्यूबरकल के दरमियान में एक ग्रूव है तो एक रिज कहां पे है ग्रेटर ट्यूबरकल पे है और एक रिज क्रेस्ट जो है दैट इज ऑन द लेसर ट्यूबरकल सो जो ग्रेटर ट्यूबरकल की क्रेस्ट है इट इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म द लैटरल लिप ऑफ द दिस ग्रूव दिस बेसिपिटल ग्रूव ठीक है सो व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट द ग्रेटर ट्यूबरकल नंबर 1 इट इज अ प्रोमिनेंस ऑन द टॉप ऑफ द ह्यूमरस ठीक है जी नंबर टू इट स्पीयर सरफेस सरफेस स्पीयर एस्पेक्ट अप टू द पोस्टीरियर एस्पेक्ट इट इज गोइंग टू हैव द थ्री इंप्रेशंस इन अ रो द सुपीरियर मिडिल एंड द लोअर व्हिच इज गोइंग टू गिव द इंसर्शन ऑफ द सुपरस्पाइनेटस इंफ्रास्पाइनेटस एंड द टेरिस माइनर एंड नंबर थ्री दैट द लैटरल एस्पेक्ट पे द लैटर सरफेस इज कॉन्वेक्स एंड रफ एंड कंटीन्यूस विद द लैटर लैटर सरफेस ऑफ द बॉडी एंड नंबर 4 the crest of the greater tubercle is going to form the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus or the groove koi problem ji yahan tak greater tubercle mein koi problem hai to mujhe bataye bacha hello 
सो रहे हो जी कोई मसला नहीं है सर आर यू श्योर जी ओके नो विल टॉक अबाउट दी लेसर टू बर्कल ठीक है लेसर टू बर्कल ठीक है जी और लेसर टू बर्कल पे मैंने आपको बताया तो लेसर टू बर्कल क्या है दैट इज प्रेजेंट एट इट्स अ स्मॉल प्रोमिनेंस ठीक है एंड एंड यू सी इट इज मोर प्रोमिनेंट देन द ग्रेटर टू बर्कल ठीक है ये एंटीरियरली एस्पेक्ट पे है ना सो इट्स अ स्मॉलर एंड मोर प्रोमिनेंट एंड इट इज प्रेजेंट वेयर इट इज लोकेटेड एट द एंटीरियर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द ह्यूमरस ठीक है एंटीरियर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द ह्यूमरस राइट ठीक है and at the, and 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 you can see over here at the anterior superior aspect of this tubercle we have got a muscular impression over here again theek hai and this is this the impression which is representing the insertion of the subscapularis muscle kisi ko yaad hai ji subscapularis kahan se aa raha hai kahan se aa raha hai subscapularis costal surface of scapula ji costal surface of the ठीक है टू थर्ड ऑफ दोस्टल सर्फेस ऑफ दैपला से आ रहा है ठीक है सब स्केपुलर इज मसल एंड इज बिंग टू बी इंसर्टेड वेयर एट द एंटीरियर स्पीरियर ऑफ द लेस ट्यूबरकल ऑफ दूमस क्लियर जी ओके नो अगेन द लिप द क्रेस्ट ऑफ द लेस ट्यूबरकल इट इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म द ये कौन सा लिप बनाएगा जी इंटर ट्यूबरकल सर्कल का मीडियल लिप ये मीडियल लिप बना रहा है रिमेम्बर द क्रेस्ट ऑफ द लेस ट्यूबरकल इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म द मीडियल लिप ऑफ द Inter tubercular sulcus, whereas the crest of the greater tubercle is going to form the lateral lip of the inter tubercular sulcus. Is it clear? Okay. Okay. And here I show you now the attachments of the muscles. Again, here you can see the supraspinatus is going to be inserted at the superior facet. the infraspinatus on the middle facet and the teres minor on the inferior facet right remember this is what this is the attachment over the posterior aspect na no? supra posterior aspect okay okay we have talked about this such before already Okay, you can see now the three muscle again: the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and the teres minor. Now, oh, and the on the anterior aspect, you can see the subscapularis is going to it, having attachment over the lesser tubercle. Here okay, you can see these four muscles: anterior, superior, and the posterior aspect. The, these are going to, you know, encircle or enclose, uh, or, or forming the cuff around the shoulder joint. Okay, you know? na? Anteriorly, superiorly, and posteriorly. You see, these muscles are going to and close the you know shoulder joint like a cuff that's why these four muscles are called as the rotator cuff theek okay? hai this is an important viva question we are used to ask the, the, the uh, that the name the muscles of the rotator cuff usko rotator cuff kyun kehte hain because these are just going to hold uh, and close the whole the shoulder joint like a cuff theek okay? hai and tear spear and the posterior aspect and all these muscles are basically the rotators ठीक है ना द सबस्केपुलरिस इज द मीडियल रोटेटर ठीक है ये मीडियल रोटेटर है और एंड द द इंफ्रास्पाइनेटस एंड टीज मेंस दीज आर द लैटरल रोटेटर्स एंड द सुप्रास्पाइनेटस इज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर द एब्डक्शन सो ऑल सॉर्ट ऑफ द रोटेटरी मूवमेंट्स दीज आर कैरीड आउट बाय दीज मसल्स सो दीज मसल्स दीज आर अरेंज इन अ रो एंड दे आर गोइंग टू एनक्लोज और एनसर्कल द यू नो होल ऑफ द शोल्डर जॉइंट लाइक अ कफ दैट्स व्हाई दीज आर कॉल्ड एज अ रोटेटर इज इट क्लियर जी कोई प्रॉब्लम तो नहीं है जी we will talk about the bicipital groove i told you the bicipital groove or the intertubercular groove is a deep groove or the sulcus present between the you know the lesser and the greater tubercle over here and you see this groove this intertubercular sulcus it runs obliquely downwards and runs till at the junction of the upper one third with the middle one third theek hai upper one middle upper one third or middle one third ke junction tak jo hai na it extends theek hai and there are two structures basically which are just going to run and in in this circus just show you know ye to maine aapko bata diya na ki this circus it is basically 
in having a floor, right? And it has got a medial lip and the lateral lip, right? Medial lip is formed by the crest of the lesser tubercle and the lateral lip is formed by the crest of the greater tubercles. Now, what are the structures which are running in this groove? Here you can see this tendon, the long tendon of the biceps brachii, it runs in this groove. Okay? And you see this tendon is intracapsular. Well, as it as it can't see origin Kartaji long at a basis, man, but I have to supraglenoid tubercle, right? So it is coming from the supraglenoid tubercle. You can see this muscle is getting origin from the supraglenoid tubercle. Yan se originate karega, and then it will be running intracapsular, okay? Ye capsule can run kara, okay? And it is running intracapsularly in the this intertubercle group. Here you can see it's running in the intertubercle group. This is a lesser tubercle, greater tubercle, or here a long tendon of the biceps chatra Is it clear? Along with this long tendon, there is a vessel which is running in, in this groove, and that is the ascending branch of the anterior circumflex. Here you can see the ascending branch of the anterior circumflex humeral artery. I told you now that there is a certain you know foramina at the upper aspect of the anatomical neck of the humor. So you can see, you can see the anterior ascending branch of the anterior circumflex humeral artery. It is running in this groove, getting intra, you know, capsular and is, you know, going to supply this humerus at in this neck region. You can see it. Okay, problem the neaji. The anterior circumflex humeral artery is a branch of the third part of the axillary artery. The axillary artery are here. It's the third part key. It's a branch, the anterior circumflex and the other one is a posterior circumflex. Yeah. The anterior area that is circling and circling the anterior aspect of the you know uh, uh, humerus and the other one it is on the posterior aspect. One going to the posterior aspect that is called the posterior circumflex humeral. The one coming on the anterior aspect that is the anterior circumflex humeral. So anterior circ circumflex humeral is the ascending branch which is running in this groove. So when we talk about the structures which are running in the intertubercular circus or the groove, there are two in number. Number one the long head of the biceps and number two there is a ascending branch of the anterior circumflex humeral artery. Clear ji? The problem? Okay. Now, intertubercular groove means there are three muscles are attached. Okay. As I told you that it consists of what? It consists of the medial lip, lateral lip and the floor. Right? Okay. And here you can see on the lateral lip of this intertubercular sulcus, the muscle attached that is called as the pectoralis major muscle. You can see this pectoralis major. It's going to be attached, this by laminar tendon, okay? It's going to attach where? It's going to be attached at the anterior lip of, sorry, lateral lip of the biceptal group. Okay, ji? And on the medial lip, medial lip, what's the muscle attached to, ji? Teres major. Teres major. Okay, here you can see the teres major muscle, it is getting inserted at the medial lip. And the one which is, which is attached along with the medial lip going towards the floor of the, the fossa and that is a latissimus dorsa. Okay, so there is a mnemonic for that one to remember the arrangement, the lady between two majors, right? The latissimus dorsi, right? And the two majors, pectoralis major and the teres major, right? Is it clear? Okay, now the structures, when we talk about the bicipital group, we have got the three muscles which are attached and the two structures running in it, right? The structures running are number one, the long head of the biceps and the ascending branch of the anterior circumflex humeral vessels, uh, whereas the muscle attached on the lateral lips, pectoralis major, on the middle lip, the testis starts, sorry, middle lip, there is an arterius major, and in between these two, in the floor, there is a muscle that is attached as the latissimus dorsi. Is it clear, Ji? The problem is not Okay, Ji, now we'll talk about the surgical neck of the humerus. The surgical neck, I told you, that is a constriction below the tuberosities, here you can see, it's a constriction of the neck just below the these two tuberosities. Okay, or is cubicle niche. Here we have got the on the lateral spot we have got the we have got the delta tuberosity. So surgical neck is a constriction present between the these tubercles and the delta tuberosity. Okay, it runs from just distal to these tubercles and move to the shaft of the humerus, right? And this surgical neck, it is related to the two structures also. 
दो स्ट्रक्चर सर्जिकल नेक के साथ रिलेटेड होते हैं बेटा नंबर वन the axillary nerve and the posterior circumflex femoral nerve you can see this one the axillary nerve theek hai na ye axillary nerve aa rahi hai right and this is the posterior circumflex femoral artery theek hai so and i told you before that this is a branch of the third part of the axillary artery right sorry yes so this axillary nerve and the posterior circumflex femoral artery these are running these are winding around the surgical neck of the humerus and this is the surgical neck of the humerus is the most common site of the fracture ठीक है मैक्सिमम फ्रैक्चर व्हेन व्हेन यू सी व्हेन समवन फेल ऑन द आउटसेट हैंड्स राइट व्हेन देयर इज अ ट्रैक डायरेक्ट ब्लो इन दिस रीजन इन द शोल्डर रीजन देन दिस पार्ट ऑफ द बोन इट इज मोर प्रोन टू गेट फ्रैक्चर ठीक है जी एंड व्हेन इट इज गोइंग टू बी फ्रैक्चर सो इट कैन डैमेज व्हाट इट कैन डैमेज द एक्सिलरी नर्व राइट जिसके जो कंटेंट्स इसके गिर बाइंड कर रहे हैं इनको डैमेज कर सकती है राइट सो व्हेन द एक्सिलरी नर्व विल बी डैमेज तो क्या होगा जी मैंने लास्ट टाइम बताया भी था सुफियान तुम्हें बताया था खैर बताया था सबको सबको था लेकिन सफियान का क्वेश्चन था ना yes, बताया तो था क्या था सर शायद विंगिंग ऑफ नहीं बल्कि शायद क्लोइंग क्लो... तु, तुम्हें मार पड़नी चाहिए तुमने क्वेश्चन किया तुम्हें आंसर याद नहीं है हुँ? सर मुझे रोजा लगा लगा आपकी एबडक्शन करता है राइट सो एबडक्शन इज लॉस्ट ठीक है वो फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन टू नाइनटी डिग्री की जो एबडक्शन है वो लॉस हो जाएगी is my lateral rotator lateral rotator hai to aapki lateral rotation jo hai na that will be that will be becoming weaker because you know lateral rotation is also performed by other certain other muscles also right and number 2 there is a area of the distribution the cutaneous distribution by the axillary nerve that is the kahan pe hoti hai ji isi ko yaad hai ye dekhen ye yaad sir question repeat kijiyega मैंने ये कहा जी कि जो पैरस्थीजिया होगा ना लॉस ऑफ सेंसेशन किस एरिया की होगी जी डेल्टोइड वाले हिस्से की होगी अपर लेटरल अपर लेटरल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द डेल्टोइड क्या होगा ओके ओके सो वी हैव डन विद द सर्जिकल